Now these two eighth inch thick steel mounting plates that I have are simply bare steel. They're not treated in any way. They're not galvanized, so they will rust quite rapidly unless I do something to them. So I am going to paint them. Why red? Because. But as is always the case when painting anything, I first need to prepare the surfaces so that the paint adheres and coats evenly. You may not be able to see it on camera very well, but there is a light coating in places of some machining oils that was used in manufacture of this assembly, and I need to clean that off or the paint won't stick. So to clean it off, I'm going to use a very specialized cleaner that I have. It is specifically formulated to not only reduce the surface tension of the solvent in use, so that the solvent can get onto all of the different uh, surface imperfections on this, but it also creates an emulsification of the oils on here so that they can be washed off in that solvent. And not only that, it actually kills viruses and bacteria as well, leaving these clean enough that you could eat off of them, actually. And that cleaner is soap. Now that they're clean, I'm going to just rough them up a little bit with some steel wool to give the paint something to adhere to. Alright, that didn't work very well, so time to go to 3M. 3M always comes through when it comes to products. Perfect. That makes really quick work of it. I'll just finish it up that way. That 3M scuff pad worked very, very well. And now I'm just going to cover these holes, since there's threads inside, for the mounting hardware with some tape so I don't get paint in them, or at least not too much paint. And I will take this outside and spray it down. While the paint's drying and my mounting plate's outside, I'm going to switch this pulley out, because the pulley doesn't do me any good. I need to put uh, on something that can couple to this. So I'll put this special GM coupler that I bought on my alternator. Now, you have to somehow get this pulley off of here, and you can't just grab this with a wrench and turn it, because the whole alternator turns. You could potentially block the fan, but it's really inconvenient. It takes probably 80 foot-pounds of torque or something to get that off of there. Uh, so, the official way to do it is to take a hex driver and put it in the end here, and then take a wrench, put it on this nut, and turn it off. Now, I could do that, however, if you take this to any shop, any garage, anywhere in the United States, they are not going to do it that way. They're going to do it this way. Done. That was easy enough, wasn't it? But you can try using ordinary tools uh, to get it off of there. For retightening it, it's supposed to be a specific torque, uh, and then you could use these, but once again, any garage is just going to zip it on with an impact wrench, so that works too. Now let's take this thing apart. Now that the nut is loose, we can take that off. It's got a lock washer on it. Set these aside. The pulley just pulls straight off of this thing. And uh, the fan also comes off, if you're so inclined. Of course, I'm going to leave the fan on. Well, but I want to take the fan off. Alright, now I have to put on my special coupling and I believe it just threads on. It's supposed to, anyway. <clears throat> I don't know. Hopefully this thing is uh, good enough quality. It's really not threading on there. I'm going to have to look at this a little bit closer. Well, I'm not too impressed with the quality of the uh, threading in this. It seems to be threading on, but it's going extremely difficult. I'll just uh, continue doing this, I guess, and hopefully it finally gets tight. It has to be tight or this fan won't be secured. Well, I have it on this far, and it simply will not thread on any further, not without a huge amount of torque. And I've got a lot further to go yet, so I need to figure something else out. Um, I think I'm going to take it off and 
put some sort of spacers in here or something. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about it. This thing is really stuck on there now. And I'm starting to worry that this is going to strip out. Just trying to get this thing off of here. It was obviously defective. But I need to remove it somehow. Oh, I think I'm finally getting somewhere now. So, fortunately my alternator is okay. I put uh, penetrating oil in this thing to hopefully help it along. Uh, you can see all the metal that came off of the threads on this because the threads are made improperly. So I'm going to try to figure out what to do next. I might, uh, I might just try it again to be honest. The threads are cleaned out now, these threads aren't damaged. Or I may see if I have some washers to put in there as spacers. There's no reason it has to be all the way on there. Well, I finally got it on the alternator. Had to run to the hardware store to get some washers that I stuck underneath because it wouldn't thread on properly. But uh, it seems to be on there and it's on there square. I tightened both of the uh, set screws as much as I dared so there's really no way that's going to slip anymore. I probably should have just returned this because it was defective but I'm not going to bother. It was a mail order thing and that'd be a real pain so I think this will work. I had intended to uh, do this strategy to get the correct length. That might be a problem now but We'll see. So the next step is to put this plate that I just painted. You can see I was impatient and some of the newsprint cape gave off on it, but I don't really care about that. It's just to keep it from rusting. And it uh, actually did rust just a little bit just by putting the water on to wash it. It's only wet for about 45 seconds and there's already a little bit of rust in the pits on it. Anyway, so I'm going to mount this to the engine. It has to go with the uh, welded nut certs, whatever you call them, this way. However, if you put it on this engine, it doesn't sit flush. There is this hose that sticks out just a little bit further than this mounting flange. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of washers, put them behind here on each of these mounting holes just to space it off that much. And that should be enough. I'm using four 3 quarter inch 5 16 grade 8 bolts for this because it's fine thread into, the, uh, into these engines. And I'm going to put lock washers on it, so that hopefully it doesn't vibrate loose. I have the plate mounted to the engine now, and I just kind of tack this thing on, set screw loosely, uh, about where it needs to be on the engine. And I bolted the other plate up to the alternator. This just takes a 5 16 uh, screw, it's got a threaded, threaded uh, pole on the alternator. And this one I think I used a three-eighths or something. I don't remember. Anyway, a bolt in here and I bought for spacers. I just bought some pipe fittings. I could cut something but this sure seemed like a lot easier. I thought four inches would be about right. So I found something that was about four inches in height since that'll be the spacer in these four corners. This happens to be almost exactly four inches. So I'll just put that on there and check the fit. And it's just about perfect. I may need a washer in there or so, or I may need to slide this up the engine shaft just a little bit, but it looks like that'll work, so I'm just going to continue with that plan. It took a little while to figure out how to put everything together so that everything aligned properly. I had to use some different setups with washers and, and whatnot, but uh, I have this on here. I put the key in the shaft. Um, everything's tightened down, so it should be pretty solid. I pull on this, it rotates in the proper direction. Uh, a couple things I forgot to note earlier. This alternator is just a uh, standard bare aluminum finish. They do sell chrome alternators. Chrome alternators will, will, will not work as well as just the standard type. Uh, chrome has a very low emissivity. They won't get rid of the heat very well, so I would not recommend that. And also, this is kind of ugly, this muffler. Uh, initially, it came with this however it goes on here. This thing on here to make it look all nice and pretty, but I removed that because I have some future plans for it. Anyway, I think that's enough for today, at least. 
this is the basic basic setup and I'll continue with this more later. Well I went inside and realized that I was bored so I'm back out here. I'll continue after all. Now I said I was going to put this whole assembly onto this old Jeep skid plate and I think I'm just going to put it right here. I'm just going to take a, a screw, mark out the four mounting holes for it, drill those out. Hopefully they don't come on top of some uh, support bracing on the bottom or anything. And drill those out and bolt the engine down. More on those details in a little bit. But while I'm at it, I think I'm also going to put these casters on here somewhere so that I can roll it around. I only have two, unfortunately. I'll figure the rest out later, but uh, put them on the bottom here and here or something. I don't know. Um, I found these in the trash. Things some people don't throw away. I have the holes drilled in the base. One of them is already here, so I didn't have to drill that one. I mounted those casters to this side of it. Then I can just lift this side, hopefully to move it around or add wheels eventually on that side. This is kind of a temporary thing anyway, just to see how it works. But to mount the engine, I didn't want to bolt it directly to this because this is fairly thin metal and it'll kind of act like a, a speaker diaphragm for all the engine noise. I want to isolate it a little bit from this. And I couldn't find any reasonably priced isolation mounts, so I bought some rubber grommets. I'm going to put those on here, set the engine on top, then put another one on top of each of these, followed by a washer, and finally a bolt through the whole thing. And I drilled these holes extra large so that the bolt doesn't need to contact the metal. So that should isolate the engine from this plate a little bit. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. These are just natural rubber. The engine gets way too hot for these. These will get hard and brittle eventually, but I'm going to give it a try for now. And since I can't tighten the nuts on the bottom all the way, I'm using these nylon lock, lock nuts so that I can just tighten them to where they need to be and they still won't rattle loose. I have it all mounted up. The vibration anti makeshift anti-vibration mounts didn't work out quite as well as I would had hoped, but there is some compliance here, so maybe they still do something. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend that mounting method after trying it, but it's probably better than just bolting it straight to a steel plate. This whole assembly weighs about 60 pounds, I would estimate, so it's pretty manageable yet. Uh, and then you can, of course, wheel it around. I need to do something on this other side yet to make it more transportable, but this is a good start, and it's probably going to serve as the test bed for the rest of this video. I may make it a little bit better later. I may not. I don't know. But uh, I think this is where I'm going to stop for today, and we'll, we'll get around to firing it up eventually, but thanks for watching.